Horace Mann was born on May 4, 1796 in Franklin, Massachusetts. Horace was born into poverty and taught by many poorly educated teachers. At a young age, he began to teach himself in the Franklin Town Library. At the age of 20, Horace was accepted and attended Brown University in Rhode Island. He decided to take a career in law, so shortly after graduating this university, he then attended Litchville Law School, soon winning a spot in the House of Representatives. After a while, when he was elected to act as a secretary for the newly created Massachusetts Boards of Education in 1837, he used his position to enact major educational reform. He spearheaded the common school movement, ensuring that every child could receive a basic education funded by local taxes. His influence soon spread beyond Massachusetts as more states took up the idea of universal schooling. Because of the way Horace grew up, he strongly believed that all children should get an education. Horace Mann stated, Without undervaluating any other human agency, it may be safely affirmed that the common school may become the most effective of all forces of civilization. Horace also created six main principles regarding public education and its troubles. One, Citizens cannot maintain both ignorance and freedom. Two, this education should be paid for, controlled, and maintained by the public. Three, this education should be provided in schools that embrace children from varying backgrounds. Four, this education must be non-secretarian. Five, this education must be taught using tenets of a free society. And six, this education must be provided by a well-trained professional teachers. Mann created and established the State Board of Education and departed from the Senate to serve as the board's first secretary. Seeing public school as a way to improve and equalize educational opportunity, Mann comprehensively surveyed the condition of state schools, establishing training institutes for teachers, increased the length of the school year to six months, and gathered support for more funding for teacher salaries, books, and school construction. Mann dedicated the later part of his life to the attention of public schools. Horace started a bi-weekly journal, Common School Journal, in 1838 for teachers and lectured on education to all those who would listen. He argued in this journal for public education in economic terms, saying that it would increase the wealth of individuals, communities, the state, and the country as a whole. Few historians believe that his and other reformers were alarmed by the appeal and promoted state-regulated public education as a way to bring order and discipline to the working class in this rapidly changing society. Threatened by the growing population of urban poor, Mann and his fellow reformers placed a major emphasis on moral training, standardization, and classroom drill. Horace Mann has been given the title Father of School Movement because of his actions and devotion to publicizing schools around the com country. Because of his concerns for the educational system, most states adopted his six principles. These schools then began to train teachers professionally and the teachers then taught and disciplined children within the classroom. His words angered groups across the social and political spectrum, from clergymen to educators to politicians, but his ideas prevailed and still do today. Men also believed that the equality of rural schools had to be raised and that teaching was the key to that improvement. To be able to do what Horace Mann did for the educational system during the hardships of our country is truly remarkable. To be able to stand up and state that Negroes should be given an equal opportunity as whites to attend school must have taken a tremendous amount of courage. I am truly baffled and amazed by his actions. Though I believe that some religion principles should be taught in school, I agree with one of his principles that religion should not be forced to be taught in the classroom because I respect and understand that we all have freedom to worship how, where, and what we may. But his last principle, that knowledge must be taught by well-trained professionals, I wholeheartedly agree with. A student cannot expect to learn from a class when the teacher or professor is not teaching or have been taught the principles necessary to teach and instruct a class. This is why I believe this. Horace Mann once said, a human being is not attaining his full heights until he is educated. I really like this quote because it holds a lot of truth behind it. One cannot expect to reach his full potentials without obtaining a full knowledge of the things and one cannot teach those principles learned without first learning for themselves.